Hello everyone, this is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Wednesday, October 18th here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets, the current market environment, and then finish off looking at some sector analysis. We're going to jump right into the charts here with the S&P 500, the SPY ETF. You can see we closed up marginally 22 cents on the day. That's good for nine basis points to the upside. And if we go to the weekly chart, you can see we're up uh, almost a dollar, 74 cents here in the SPY ETF so far this week through Wednesday, uh, up 29 bips so far this week. So the weekly landscape has not changed. Uh, basically the same sort of messaging and, and, and technical picture here that we've been looking at for the past several weeks. We are at all-time highs here on the weekly chart. We're above all rising moving averages, fairly extended away from them, but the trend remains strong and momentum uh, continues to persist here on the weekly chart. Now on the daily chart, you can see we've really come to a uh, grind to the upside here. That's basically been the messaging throughout the past week or so. Just take a look at the very, very narrow ranges here intraday, and it's just been an absolute slow crawl higher. And we've noted basically the lack of volatility, the lack of ranges, the lack of volume in this market. There really just does not seem to be uh, very much institutional activity here whatsoever. It seems like, you know, every day that passes here, I wake up, look at, you know, scan different headlines, and I'm just seeing more and more uh, records being set for sort of the most peaceful period in markets, whether it be on a volatility basis or volume or ranges or, you know, all of those basically three things we just discussed. Uh, it, it, it just continues to be a market that floats higher, does not seem to care about too much, doesn't have a whole lot of catalysts to really latch on to right now, perhaps still waiting for those tax bills, tax reform to play itself out, uh, perhaps waiting on earnings season, and then add you know your 700 other things that potentially are lurking or um, market hasn't really sniffed out yet, but we're basically in this period of low and we can float higher here. So I think the messaging around the, the, the past several videos here are all the same. The trend remains strong. Breath is still kind of supporting this market higher. We can find some divergences here and there if we look closely on a day-to-day -day basis, but still uh, in a broader kind of step back, 30,000 30, foot view, looking at breath, still supportive of this market. And, uh, you know, momentum is still picking up here in or holding strong in a number of different sectors. So, that's basically the landscape that we're looking at. Uh, I think, again, the key takeaway here and the thing I want to keep reinforcing, especially for the active traders, if you're a longer term sort of uh, position trader or investor or holder, IRAs, that type of thing. I mean, we're, there's not much to do here. We're in a bull market. We're at all-time all highs. Just sit back and enjoy the gains. I think for the tactical traders that are allocating in and out on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, moving you know in and out of positions or adjusting exposure, I still think it is very uh, important not to get complacent here, not to get um, lulled into a false sense of security with the very tight ranges that we're seeing. This is a 22 cent day up in the SPY, for example. One day that will change, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next year, uh, we don't know, but it's something that I still think is something to be aware of and make sure we're managing risk and being aware of open positions, stops, position sizing, all that good stuff uh, that we are taught as traders. So keep that in mind and um, you know enjoy the gains, enjoy the rally where you where you can and where you have those positions. So that's the S&P 500, the IWM starting to perk up a bit here today. Uh, I'm liking the action here in the IWM. I like this consolidation. I like that it's mostly consolidating through time. It's let some of those fast moving averages catch up. It's consolidating under that 150 level. It's been about 10 or 11 days now. So I like the look here. I'm paying attention to it. And in fact, maybe a continuation trade in the cards here if it can start to lift above today's highs, above 150, uh, or just spend a little more time. That's cool with me too. Um, so I, I like the look here of of basically this consolidation and uh, I'll be paying attention to, to see how it closes out the week. If we look at the weekly candle now, you can see um, 
still not doing a whole lot there, not so, so interesting. And really looking at the weekly chart, I wouldn't mind another you know week or two like this. Maybe even finish out the rest of October with more sideways to down and then set us up for that end of year rally. That would be pretty pretty nice looking setup there in the small cap. So something I'm paying attention to. NASDAQ 100 uh, continues to actually have this uh, grind higher here. You can see uh, tremendously low volume, um, as we've sort of pointed out here, ever since breaking out above this 147 level, but it is making progress to the upside, still well above the fast 8 and 20 period moving averages here. The bulk of uh of companies that make up this NASDAQ 100 haven't quite reported yet. And, and I think um, either late next week or the end of the month, I think, is when you'll start to see many of these names um, start to report. So maybe this is a fairly innocent kind of grind higher until that point. Uh, but once again, um, you know, this this lack of volume here on, on the upside move, on, on the upside grind, the very lack of institutional activity in here is very interesting. Um, we have had short positions in this in two occasions. We're no longer short this. I think last time we were short was on this bar right here on this reversal bar. And that was coming after um, the a price action set up here on this reversal, but also for uh, ex to control exposure that we had outstanding in our uh, other swing positions. We recovered, um, geez, both these days look the same. We covered earlier this week here for a small loss, and we no longer have the cues in here. We've also reduced you know, the, the general exposure in our portfolio, so I think we're down to maybe 40% or so cash, which is um, enough for me not to really need a hedge or um, you know, really desire one until we get a better sort of price action setup or until the market starts to shift. Again, I'm still... Um, suspect most of the cues here uh, that hasn't changed but um, no setup at this point if we start to break below this accelerated trend line here on volume um, that would be something that would be interesting to me but i still think the big bogey here is this 146.50 level get back below these highs from september and that would be a more interesting sort of uh, trapped sort of breakout setup here that that would maybe set up a bigger move to the downside. And again, that's all speculation at this point. And, and until we see evidence of that actually happening, there's certainly no trigger uh, at this point for it. But um, the cues again, just continue to sort of levitate higher up 35 bips here on the week. So that's the landscape overall. I think the takeaways are fairly similar to the last two videos that we've done. Um, and my positioning, I think, is, is fairly clear. I do have sort of a uh, one foot out the door here, and I understand that that might leave some profits on the table, but it allows me to sleep easy at night and um, you know still be able to participate in this market, but not be 100% all in. That's my approach right now to uh to this environment so that's the that's the environment overall let's look at some other sector uh, markets here we'll start with tlt per usual you can see we're down a bit here on the week basically trading uh, very much inside of last week's range entirely. We're pulling off of these highs, kind of filling this old gap back here from late last week or from mid last week, and just retesting maybe this trend line here. If you want to draw it, this is not drawn very accurately. So you could certainly refine that. But basically, we still have sort of a messy, uh, larger consolidation here. Support held at 123 at the beginning of October. We had this bounce, and now you know we're pulling off of those highs just a little bit. So looks like a bit of a headache for, for me, for my taste in TLT. So it's not something that I'm very much interested in. If we get back below 123 or back above, you know, maybe 127 or so, I think that those would be cleaner sort of trending spots. But uh, until that happens, not so interested. Oil is hanging out above this 1030 level, which again is not so precisely drawn, but just sort of a line in the sand for me. And as long as it can stay above there, uh, I do find it you know, sort of uh, bullish or that innocent until proven guilty type of mentality. It's back to these recent highs here. Doesn't have a whole lot of momentum behind it right now, but uh, it's tough to tough to really short this until it starts breaking some of this near-term support below 1030. That might be your first shot. 
natural gas uh, back to these lows here. This thing just looks like an, an absolute headache as well. We talked about this double bottom new 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 year to date low that it made back in the beginning of October, then it had the strong thrust higher, now it's kind of rolling back over. So I think if you're bullish here, you wanna see a higher low get put in, you wanna see the 625 level hold, and you wanna see us ultimately get back above 650. Um, otherwise, be careful here in UNG. And uh, I think, oh, and the metals, starting to move back over, rolling rolling back over down 1.74%. So giving back almost all of the gains from last week here. And you can see below the 8 and 20 period moving average now back on the daily chart. So uh, not a good sort of opening three-day week here for the gold bulls. You're going to want to see that, uh, you're going to want to see this 123 level recovered and, and fairly quick, I think, to um, to start to, to regain some optimism here, I think. Basically the same thing as natural gas. We want to see a higher low get put in. You don't want to see us come all the way back down and retest this sort of outside reversal day back here on the 6th. So a higher low is what the bulls are looking for right now. Until then, uh, maybe be a little cautious there. Silver, basically the same thing. Maybe holding up just a little bit on a relative basis um, on this recent sort of pullback, but still down 2% here on the week. Hasn't quite given back all of last week's gains just yet. So silver, metal, uh, silver and gold both pulling back and uh, looking suspect so far this week. If we look at some of the sectors, XLK continues to just rip higher here, or I don't know if rip is the right right word, but um, is just continuing to float higher here very slowly, but uh, continues to just grind away. There's no pullback in sight, no real volume behind this move, but price is what pays. It is continuing higher. And if you're long XLK, you're surely getting paid here. So technology is continuing to work. Semiconductors goes hand in hand, continues to work here as well. Um, a little bit of a range open, uh, you know, a little bit of a range kind of carving out today. Briefly, we're below yesterday's lows and you can see recovered all of that and closed back at the highs here. So SMH, XLK, technology semiconductors, both working well right now. If we go to healthcare, also back to highs, tried to break out today above the September highs and reversed a bit and closed near the lows or at the lows of the session, still up marginally on the day, but couldn't quite hold new highs here. So decent volume coming in. I know this is uh, very much a, a sector in headline uh, right now or making headlines pretty much every single day. So um, there could be you know, some pretty good movers happening here underneath the hood of the ETF. So pay attention to that. But uh, technically is still holding up very well. It's again, tried to make new highs today. It failed, but it's trading at highs for, um, you know, for, for basically um, for, for the year. So XLV continues to be strong. Energy, we've been talking about this kind of sideways consolidation. I like it. Frankly, I welcome it. The same, same kind of thought process that we have in the IWM and the small caps after a nice run of breaking out here throughout September. I like this consolidation, let, letting the moving averages catch up. The volume is lighter, and uh, this would set us up for a potential nice continuation pattern. If it decides to roll over, then, of course, we can just kind of wait for that to play out. Maybe a higher low get put in, or maybe it's a big fake out, comes all the way back down to the lows. We'll have to see, but uh, I think this nice, tight, kind of overlapping price action is something that can set us up for uh, a trade in sort of either direction. IYT, also another one that's that's consolidating here. It pushed off of these 180 highs. It's finding some support at the 20 period moving average. This recently had broken out. If we look at the weekly chart, it's a pretty good looking uh, chart here on the weekly time frame for uh, the Dow Jones transportation average. And you can see just consolidating here at highs. So it's something to pay attention to if you're looking to get back involved in this sector. These are rails that have been on fire, some of the uh, airlines uh, and so on. These individual companies might be setting up and a lot do have earnings coming up. So make sure you are paying attention to those calendars. And last but not least, discretionary ETF here. Uh, I only bring this up just to point out the potential, um, you know, if we do see continuation lower tomorrow, is this a lower high that just got put in from the early October highs, right, right underneath $92, something to pay attention to. I think arguably if you zoom out here, it's still fairly range bound in this bigger pattern, in this bigger consolidation, multi-month consolidation, but uh, something to pay attention to if you're looking to uh, sort of tactically trade this or some of those components uh, underneath the XLY ETF. 
So that's uh, that's everything I had to cover. So hopefully you guys are having a good week out there. It's Wednesday, a few days left. Let's see how we close out the week. And don't forget to check those early earnings calendars, any instruments you're trading out there. Make sure you're not uh, accidentally holding into earnings. That would be, um, you know, that that that's always a painful, potentially painful lesson. Um, and I think that's it. So thanks for watching. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like these videos, stay up to date with all of the latest that we put out week to week. Thanks again for watching and hope to talk to you again soon.